Well, Israel's much-anticipated ground offensive in Gaza is underway in the next step of the war. The Israeli Defence Force has released pictures of their soldiers entering the rubble of urban areas, a mission being severely hampered by the maze of underground tunnels. Here was a spokesperson from the IDF today. The ground activity in the Gaza area is continuing and intensifying. Land, air and sea forces acted today in Gaza and eliminated lots of terrorists. Among the dozens of terrorists who were killed in encounters and from the strikes from the air are commanders from the tactical echelon. The tactical echelon from Hamas are those who are commanding the forces on the ground and directing them. Former Israeli ambassador to Australia, Mark Soffer, joins me now. Welcome to the program again, Mark. Look, what does this Thank ground you. offensive involve and what does the Prime Minister Netanyahu mean when he says this is stage two? Well, I, I, the ground uh, um, entrance into Gaza is part and parcel of the entire uh, effort uh, to achieve the strategic aim, uh, which is a strategic aim shared by everybody in Israel, left and right, uh, uh, whoever, uh, to eliminate the Hamas as a, uh, a military force and to stop it from ever becoming political force again in Gaza, uh, on our borders. Uh, mm -hmm. It's not possible to do that only from the air. Now, I should say uh, that uh, in five minutes we could have finished this war by blanket or carpet bombing and nothing, nothing could be further from our minds, nothing at all, because it is really uppermost in everybody's thoughts to... to, to minimize uh, uninvolved civilians' uh, involvement in this uh, uh, and to minimize collateral damage. And mm. that is why uh, we have no choice, really, but to move in uh, as uh, as a ground force. And uh, we'll see what happens from now on. We are trying our utmost to minimize the damage, on the one hand, to uninvolved civilians, but on the other hand, to ensure that the Hamas is defeated once and for all and uh, completely. Mark, the objective of IDF going in at the moment on the ground, is that solely to destroy Hamas or is there also going to be an effort by some of the, the soldiers on the ground to try and retrieve the hostages who we'd imagine, based on, you know, the, the accounts by some of those who've been freed, we imagine that they are being held in that spider web of, of complicated tunnels underground. Yes, that spider web, web, which you call so correctly, of tunnels underground is cost billions and billions of dollars for Hamas, money which was ploughed in uh, from foreign sources and which, instead of going to hospitals, schools, medical centres, mm. uh, etc., has been uh, used just to fuel a, a, a war machine, really, dedicated to death, destruction, slaughter and massacre. So, yes, you're right. There are something in the region of 240 uh, uh, hostages inside of uh, Gaza, being taken inside of Gaza, ranging from six, seven-month-old infants to 85, 90-year-old uh, elderly men and women. Uh, and many of them were, were pulled out of their beds, dragged, uh, thrown into cars, slung into cars, many injured, uh, uppermost, uppermost in our minds, together with the defeat of Hamas as a military organization and as a political entity. Uppermost is the freedom, is the freedom of the release of hostages, which is not only a war crime, in every tenet of international law, but the way they were brutally treated and brutally abducted is indeed a crime against humanity. And mm -hmm. anybody who even thinks, uh, and I've seen, uh, unfortunately, support for this, anybody who even thinks that this is a uh, something which can be tolerated really is living in an uncivilised world which you refuse to be part of. I know, it makes me beyond furious when you hear people call Hamas freedom fighters. It's absolutely disgusting. And as a mother, to think of those nine-month-old babies separated from their mothers, being in the care of terrorists. Who's looking after them? What are they feeding them? Are they changing their nappies? I mean, it, it, it's traumatising, um, you know, for, for those parents, even if their children are still alive. There has been pressure on Netanyahu to do more to get the hostages back. There was one suggestion that Israel should release the 10,000 Palestinians that it holds in prisons. I mean, clearly, this is a completely different uh, set of circumstances. The 10,000 Palestinians, uh, many of them, or half, over half, are held on national security grounds. They're soldiers, they're fighters. They're not innocent family members who, as you say, were taken from, violently ripped from their beds. But, but what is happening to bring the hostages home? What is, what is Israel doing? 
Well, there is no offer on the table, Shari, to actually make this uh, 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 will release the hostages if you release all the Palestinian uh, terrorists, really, or security uh, threats that we have uh, arrested inside of Israel. There is no offer like that on the table from Hamas, obviously, which has just spent uh, um, three or four days going on the rampage uh, uh, pogrom. You mentioned earlier Nazi Germany, mm. uh, whatever you want to call it, there is no offer such as that on the table. So not only that, I should say, but the Red Cross has been completely and utterly refused to even visit uh, uh, any of the hostages. Yes, they are being held mainly under in the tunnels, but uh, as far as I, I can see from press reports and others, uh, under the hospitals uh, to ensure that we don't uh, uh, actually take them out from there. So it's a very, very complex issue, and it's being... Uh, we are not negotiating with Hamas. I, mm. I stress that in every way. Israel, and I'm not a government spokesman, Israel mm. is not negotiating with Hamas. Other countries are, and Hamas is playing it as a cynical game, releasing two here, releasing two there. Perhaps he'll stop the ground uh, offensive or whatever, mm. and uh, they are quite simply not serious. They're not serious because we're talking here of a rabid jihadist slaughter exactly. machine. Exactly. Uh, exactly. And so we don't expect them to also come to us with uh, serious, civilized thinking. Mm, uh, that's mm. not going to happen under any circumstances for people such as that. Mm. Mark Suffer, thank you so much for your time. We'll have you on the program again as this conflict, as this war continues. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Sherry.